What up, Tosha Tribe? I'm back for part two of our of my Nepalese trip that we just took, that I just got back from, um, which re-energized me to get back on board with our YouTube videos, but to maybe do some more videos for y'all. Um, just kind of showcasing different places in the world that maybe y'all have never thought about going or um, didn't know it even existed. You know, at this point, I've traveled to about going on 85 countries and, um, you know, I've, I've been to Paris multiple times, you know, Italy multiple times, London countless times. So what's left for me are these places where it's like, why would you be going there? Like, what, what is over there for you? Uh, for people like me who are constantly curious and have a need to see and immerse and do everything, it's everything for me. So anyways, back to actually Kathmandu. So Kathmandu was kind of, it's like kind of a multi-layered city, right? Um, it's a very religious country. There are more Buddhists, more on the east side. They're much more Buddhist. And as you start going more to the western part of the country, it's much more Hindu. Uh, they are bordered by India on one side, Bhutan on one side, and I think on the other side, like Tibet and China. So they're kind of just like smushed up inside of those mountains. Um, the, this was the area back in the day where you had a lot of movement for the Silk Road, a lot of trading would happen in this area because of its location. It is a small old city that has now spread out immensely within the valley. Uh, so the old part of the town, you have lots of these like small little roads and it's just packed y'all. But it's crazy because it's like mad organized chaos, right? Like you're going to be walking on the road and there's going to be a donkey truck, a car, a bike, people, and then little tuk-tuks all on the road. And these roads are not big, y'all. It's literally like one-way roads. But it's wild because nobody hits you, nobody touches you, nobody's all up on you. And for some of y'all who've been to like large cities, um, there's no such thing as space, right? There's no such thing as space. They're going to be on you. You're going to get bumped. Like New York, please, you're going to get shoulder checked at least 10 times. Don't try to stop in the middle of the road. Don't try to just stop because you got to look at your phone to see where the hell you're going because you're going to get shoulder checked one from the front side and from the back side. All right. It is what it is. Um, so that part was like really cool. Um, and so it has like this one area, which is called Tamil, which is kind of like where all of those hippies in the seventies used to go, right? This was back when, um, a lot of them would go out there and it was like peace and love and being in the mountains, smoking some Himalayan weed and really being a part of that. Um, it's very touristy. It's very white. It's, and I'm, when I'm saying white, it's very like, like, I didn't see a lot of black folk out there, like, at all. I think in this whole three-week trip, I think I might have seen, like, five black people. Shout out to that Chicago couple that I met. We kept meeting up all over, especially in Bhutan. Um, so, anyway, so Tamil is kind of like, if you guys have been to Siem Reap in Cambodia, like, that real touristy where it's just, like, anything kind of goes, right? Amsterdam, like, the red light district, where it's just kind of, like, jaffu, you know? It's just, like, a little bit, like... In Gujarati, would call it like Gardi, you know? It's just like people and chaos and it's all around, you know? And, you know, the hikers, some of those backpackers, you know, they just look like dirty AF, right? Like they ain't showered in a long time. They got those dirty little backpacks on and it's like, we're backpacking. Um, I have never been one who's been into that type of travel. Your girl likes her bathroom. Your girl needs some amenities. I don't think I'm spoiled, but I do need some things. You understand what I'm saying? Um, but it was like trippy because you're inside of this Tamil area. There's like all these bong shops everywhere. Like literally it'll be like bong. You want some weed? And it's like, okay, y'all. Um, I think I got harassed by at least five random men who just rolled up on you like weed, smoke, hash. Do you do any of that? And what's trippy is they're not even young, bro. Like they are like old ass people, right? Like I have this one little small looking like Chinese looking man. He must have come up to my shoulder and he, I thought... He was just walking across the street. Nah, he was rolling up on me to be like, you smoke, you want some weed, you want some hash? What do you want? What do you need? I'm good, fam. I'm good. Thank you so much, though. Thank you so much. Um, so it's interesting with that part. And then you contrast it when you get outside of Tamil. And it's much more local. It's much more like people who live there. And it's so much more calmer. It's much more religious. There's so many more temples that are there. A lot of their, the Buddhist temples that they call them, they call them stupas. And so depending on which part of the world you are in, your stupas will look different, right? So the stupas in Burma were more pinnacle shaped. 
Um, the stupas that are in Nepal are square and round, and the Buddha is described by just eyes. Uh, in Bhutan, they are they're rectangular, you know, and they're longer. So it's kind of cool that you can identify kind of where you are and what these religions are based on their religious structures, right? Same with like a mosque. You know what a mosque looks like anywhere in the world because the mosque looks like that, right? Same with Catholic churches. Um, actually, probably even same with like regular churches, right? Generally. So I thought that part was really cool. Um, and then they are very deeply religious people. Um, it's interesting because in these parts of the world, the Buddhism feels more like a culture opposed to being a religion. And so it's very pervasive in everything that they do and everywhere they are. Um, it's kind of cool, like anytime you walk into a place, you're always gonna walk clockwise because you don't walk counterclockwise because it's contrary to like good luck and bringing good luck. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, and then what's also really nice is nobody bothers you, right? Nobody's on you, nobody's like, come on, yeah, maybe a little bit, but it wasn't anything that you couldn't deal with, if, especially if you've been on the coast here in Africa, the way that these beach boys harass you. If you could deal with them, you're fine. If you can deal with the merchants in Turkish markets, then you could deal with these guys in Tamil. Um, but what I liked about it was that nobody was watching you and staring at you. I get that a lot. I get it a lot, okay? Um, where people are gonna touch me or they're gonna walk next to me, they're gonna take pictures. Um, I had that happen on this trip, which is like super obnoxious. Um, but again, it's generally when you're getting more towards being around Indians than you know being around these Nepalese people. These Nepalese people were very relaxed, really chilled out, um, nice, friendly. Um, I'm sure they have their own problems. Like one of our guides, shout out to Krishna, he's great. If you guys are ever out there, y'all gotta look this man up. He is gonna hook y'all up. I'm like, whatever you need, that man's got it. Um, but their food was also really good. It kind of tastes like Indian food, but without as much spices, right? Like generally you always know when you're going in an Indian place because it's just gonna smell of all the masala, right? It's the onions, it's the garlic, it's the ginger, and it's just like, whew, sometimes we could tone this down. So what was nice with the Nepalese food was that it's kind of like toned down Indian food. So even when you walk into restaurants, the first thing you're smelling is not masalas. It's actually like, you know, different smells. Um, I think it's also really interesting how like pretty much everywhere in the world, everybody has some form of like a dumpling that you eat. So in Nepal, in these areas, they call them momos. And they are just basically little uh, dumplings that are filled with chicken or cheese or beef or vegetables or whatever it is. Uh, same like dim sum, right? It's dumplings. Um, the, oh, pierogies, dumplings, right? Um, I forgot what the Russians call theirs, but same, it's like something similar. But basically, it's just big fat dumplings and they're delicious. They're easy street food. Um, they've got beautiful paintings, beautiful paintings. I bought one. Let me show you guys one. I think you guys are gonna love it. It's gorgeous. So... I bought this painting. I don't know if you guys can see it. C'est magnifique, c'est bon. Imagine this is a fully hand painted piece that they take and it takes them like a while. Like I think this one, it took them like three weeks to make it depending on the quality of the master who's making it. Um, and again, these pictures are depictions of the way in which one should live their life if you are a Buddhist. Um, so this one is one to have in your home and you keep it in the east direction of your home And again, it is to help to keep good energy in your house. Make sure that you don't have bad things that are going on um, So I have one of these it's lovely and then I have another one that's in the back where it is another depiction of one of their um, gods so what I thought was very cool about being here was how their Buddhism also looks a little bit different than, for instance, being in Thailand or being down in the south part of the countries. Um, here, because they're so close to India, it's interesting that their Buddhism kind of also looks a little bit like Hinduism in that their Buddhist takes on many different forms, which I loved because I really love this whole thing of feeling like you've got a choice in even what and how you are practicing and who you practice to. I also really liked that the Buddha here in Nepal and in Bhutan um, also has female form, right? A lot of these religions, there's no females anywhere around, okay? It's as though everybody just popped up out of nowhere and nobody needed no females. It's like retarded. 
Um, I really liked that these guys had a female form of Buddha um, who was just as powerful and just as revered because it's like, hello, you need us, okay? Um, anyways, I really liked it, y'all. Uh, I would definitely go back again, uh, maybe in a different time of year just to see kind of how it was and how people do and just maybe just chill and maybe check out a little bit more of like Western Nepal. Western Nepal is now getting closer and closer to India. So when we had gone to that side, we had gone to the city, and I'm probably gonna say it really wrong, but I think it's called like Lumbaini or Lubindi, and this is where the Buddha was born. Uh, when we went to Western Nepal, we were actually closer to India than we were even to being back to Kathmandu, and you can totally feel it. You can totally feel it with the way that the people look, the way that the people act, I found that more in uh, Kathmandu, you get a lot of this mix of kind of like Asian Indian mix, right? Where it's like the same, like their food, they're not as extreme looking, but it's like a blend, if that makes sense. And then when you go to Western Nepal, it's just like goes Indian, you know what I mean? All of a sudden you get the beeping of the horns for those of you guys who have been to India, in particular, Mumbai, Delhi, Haya. You cannot be in the streets without hearing a car honking. They're just gonna honk the horn just to honk the horn. If there's just too much silence, here it goes. You knew you were closer to India when you got to Western Nepal because now it was just peep, 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 peep. Oh my God, there's not that many people. Relax, okay? Anyways, um, fun place. Hung out for a couple of days and I would definitely go back to Kathmandu. Uh, look it up on the map. Check it out. See it. Again, if you guys are anybody who's interested in going, hit me up and let me know. Those guides that we used were awesome. They will definitely help you guys out. Um, and that's all I got for you guys. So... I'm coming on my third video. I'm going to tell you guys about our western part of Nepal. Bye.